Hello, thank you for joining me. Today I'm out for a walk in the Peak District near the Goit Valley. The water you can hear down below is Shooter's Clough. It's a small river that goes down from the hills up there and joins the River Goit. Now we're on this track and as we get to here, the track carries on down there, but here you can see some gateposts. The ga old gateposts to a country estate. And that's what we've come to have a look at. So as you go through here, sort of imagine perhaps a horse and carriage riding up this grand, I wouldn't quite call it an avenue, but grand drive with views down into the valley below. The place we're going to see is Irwood Hall. It was built in the 1830s by a wealthy Manchester businessman called Samuel Grimshaw, and he owned various um, parts of the well he owned the whole estate actually but he also had schools built he had his own coal mine he had a church built for people who lived on his land and it's as it was a country estate that's why we've got various rhododendrons you can see they've been carefully managed and cut down because as nice as rhododendrons can look in the spring they're a very invasive species interesting there's some steps going up there i won't go up those ones today but that just shows you how this would have all been parts of pleasure grounds. We're going to carry on along here to find what we can of the hall itself. So it's not far now. We are coming towards the hall. And as I said, the shooter's cluff is just down in the valley below. And you can also see the other track that we were on. Ahead of us, it looks like we're opening up into a clearing which is where hopefully we shall find the hall itself. When I say the hall, I might be meaning what is left of the hall, but you'll see in a moment. Come down these steps, just here, and I can just see through the trees the hall. You'll see in a moment. You can see right across the other side, the hills on the other side, the Peak District. I could see some snow on the tops of them when I was higher up the hill. Now as we come down here, it reveals itself, there is the remains of Irwood Hall. So as I said it was built by Samuel Grimshaw in the 1830s and it was lived in by the Grimshaw family for about 100 years and then unfortunately it was demolished in the 1930s or most of it was demolished. It's quite nice these arches here survive and most of the stone went into the construction of the Goit Reservoir I'm led to believe I expect. This area here would have been a nice garden, maybe a formal garden. I'm not entirely sure how it looked, but I imagine this would have all been gardens. And there'd have been a grand front to the house here. Interesting, there's another track that appears up here. They're probably what well, that wasn't the only way in that we came in. You go down that way, you'll come to the Goit Reservoir. Let's go and have a look around the ruins of the house. So here's the grand front door or where the grand front door once was would be better. You come up here, here's all the make out the various rooms. Um, and then this maybe this was an outside courtyard, I'm not entirely sure. It could have been a grand hall in the middle. And more rooms along here. Let's have a look at those arches though. So now we're the other side. So I don't overly know exactly which room would have been which when you walk around say a ruined abbey or a castle it's usually a bit easier to sort of guess what would have been what but with a house I imagine this perhaps was like um, a sun lounge looking out into the onto the garden Ooh, come down here so I imagine yeah this was a garden that was possibly sun lounge where they'd have sat and had tea and admired their gardens I'm not going to try and climb up to that window I want to get back into the hall I'll try and go around here I think I'll just stand back actually let you have a look at the best surviving parts of the ruins. It's interesting that's built right up against the hill as if it's, um, I suppose it was for shelter. But there you are, there's, there's the most impressive section of the ruins. I'm going to go around the back now, um, which possibly was the least attractive elevation of the hall because no one really ever saw it. And climb back up into the hall this way. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to carry on walking up this valley there's another stream that runs off up there because up there there is a spanish shrine but i shall talk more about that when we get there but it's about maybe a mile three quarters of a mile 
up the hill, so I'll, I won't walk all the way. I'll just see these bits of ruins of the hall, and um, then I should carry on up. This looks like this might have been some more grand arches. I'll just <laughs> get down there, looking at the bottoms of the buttresses that survive. And possibly more arches there. I'll have to have to look at some pictures if I can find any pictures of the hall how it used to look. But now I'm going to carry on up this little valley up to the Spanish Shrine. So I just started walking up towards the Spanish Shrine, but I haven't actually left the hall yet because one thing I did say was it's quite hard sometimes to work out which room was which. Like, you know, you can work out where perhaps the drawing rooms were, but which one was the drawing room, which one was the dining room. But there's some bits here which is fairly obvious. This must have been the old stable. So you go in here, you can see a horse could have stood there, one there, one there. So yeah, I'm fairly confident in saying I'm now standing in the old stable block. And possibly there was sort of a various little yard behind. So the horses would have come out here. So when I said at the beginning of the video, people would have ridden their horses. This is where their horses would have been staying. The guests no doubt would have been staying somewhere upstairs that doesn't exist anymore. But now this time, I really am going to carry on walking up. I want to find this Spanish shrine, and I'll talk about that when we get there. Let's just have a look at the stream uh, down below. Before. Good, it's quite. Can we see the stream? Yeah, it's. Uh, I can just see it right down there. There's a st streams down there. I'm going to walk on up this path towards the Spanish shrine. That's been a very pleasant mile long walk along the slopes of Foxlow Edge, the hill up here, which I'm going to walk back along, back to the Goit Valley. But as I said, when we were back down at the hall, we were going to look for a Spanish shrine. Now this Spanish shrine, I'm going to apologise in advance if I don't say her name correctly, but I believe it's Miss Dulu de Bergrin, probably haven't said that correctly, but anyway, she was a Spanish teacher at the school. She was an aristocrat and she was also a governess to the Grimshaw family who lived at Erwood Hall. So down here, they've built this little shrine for her and it's just about to reveal itself just ahead of us. It's like a little chapel. It's, um, it's probably going to be the smallest church I've ever been in. It's so small, but it's really, um, very nice just feeling just here on the on the slope of Foxlow Edge. There it is there. So let's go and have a look. So it, as I said it was built in her memory. So get to here it's a round towered church. Well the whole thing's round, let alone being a tower. Do you can see the door is very small because I'm I've got to really duck down to go in. We come inside. There's I assume it's a picture of Jesus Christ. And um, there's various pictures people have left in here. There's, um, I noticed there's this hanging up, and you can see how not straight the building is because that is obviously straight. So this window is leaning quite a long way that way, but that just all adds to the charm of it. But it's hard to convey just how small this is. As you can see, there's no chairs or anything. Look, if I can try and give you an idea, it is very small. You could probably fit three at the most chairs in it but it's not really meant to be a church for services it is just a shrine to the spanish governess of the estate so i'm going to go back outside duck down again and i'm going to carry on my walk i'm going to go up past that oak tree up to the top of foxlow edge and walk along the sort of foxlow edge and um, back to the goit valley itself so hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching from the spanish shrine on the Grimshaws estate. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe and tell your friends. Goodbye.